Today in the show we have Visa Web3 loyalty program, the Nigerian Central Bank approving stablecoins, ISDA updating its master agreement for tokenized collateral, and so much more. I'm your host, Mauricio Magaldi, and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship, or encouragement for consumption, and are meant for educational purposes only. In the first drop, we're covering Visa's recent announcement of the Visa Web3 loyalty engagement solution. The goal is to let brands create wallets, digital wallets, where the users can store reward points and provide experiences for consumers. Um, Visa actually announced with a very interesting video that describes a woman and traveling and using the wallet to enhance her experience while reaping rewards along the way. Um, Kathleen Pierce Gilmore, the SVP and global head of issuing solutions at Visa, said the following, and I quote, Imagine earning a unique digital collectible, whether it's from purchasing tickets for a sports event or participating in an augmented reality treasure hunt. Our innovative Web3-based loyalty solution empowers brands to reward customers not only for their transactions, but for their active engagement, paving the way for secure, seamless, and immersive digital and real-world experiences at their fingertips, end quote. Um, there's no clarity whether the tokens and the wallets are going to be uh, leveraging public blockchains in the note. Um, I assume it will because Visa has been working a lot with Polygon, Solana, Ethereum over the years. For all of you that are new here, I used to host Blockchain Insider, sponsored by Visa, with my co-host being Kai Sheffield, the head of crypto at Visa. And that doesn't mean anything. That just means that Visa is engaged in the market uh, using uh, public protocols. What was very interesting to me is to learn that this is going to enable merchants to actually offer different experiences. Not only, you know, you pay, you use Visa here, you, you pay for, you know, the product and service with your Visa, Visa card, and then you get rewards point by, by, by spending, but they can actually offer real world experiences. The video suggests a Pokemon Go-like um, augmented reality experience uh, while traveling so the brands can actually uh, occupy the space with digital assets and the app slash wallet will enable the users, the consumers to actually engage with those spaces while going about their day and obviously that presents a, a new alternative for brands to make a presence and get brands um, noticed uh, all over uh, the actual world. So augmented reality will add a layer of quote-unquote potential advertisement for those merchants using the Web3 loyalty solution that Visa is now offering. Um, so augmented reality definitely adds a, a new layer of experience and obviously because the assets are registered on a blockchain, there's a Web3 wallet to interact with the, with the blockchain, those points, if they are registered in a public blockchain, um, mean that they might be able to be used across other loyalty programs or across other blockchain-based features such as DeFi apps, the decentralized finance applications, or, or even games or, or other um, Web3-based um, applications or, or decentralized applications such as, you know, uh, Web3 games and apps and all the other stuff. So very interesting that Visa is uh, rolling it out. Um, you've heard me say in the show before, loyalty is one of the most obvious use cases for crypto in general for the sole reason that people are already used to dealing in points. And tokens meaning points might be a very easy, maybe even seamless transition between you know, someone who's used to do things with points and now is using points, but the points are on a blockchain. So the transition sounds pretty simple. Uh, obviously, the UX, as we like to, you know, point out, still needs to improve in the crypto side. But hopefully this uh, platform provides a seamless experience and a much better UX when dealing with the blockchain. 
So we're going to keep tabs on this because uh, I want to learn what the infrastructure is and how that's going to play out again in the public blockchain world. But again, kudos to Visa for moving the needle in the enterprise adoption of Web3 in ways that actually make sense for businesses and for consumers. And again, uh, we're going to keep uh, our eyes peeled because loyalty is a obvious use case. Enterprise use cases are probably how we're going to see mass adoption, but more importantly, how these things interoperate with other uh, Web3 applications is something that we want to learn. In our second drop today, uh, we're going to review the news about the uh, Nigerian Central Bank, the CBN, the Central Bank of Nigeria, approving the CNGN stablecoin that is going to be issued by the Africa Stablecoin Consortium. They are planning to launch the new stablecoin under the uh, CBN regulatory sandbox in uh, February 27th this year. And they announced that they're collaborating with banks and fintechs uh, and that the CNGN stablecoin will be compliant to three, not only one, but three different regulatory agencies in the country, the CBN, as, as we mentioned, but also the Nigerian uh, SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, and also the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, meaning that this is as compliant that is, as it gets uh, in the country. Um, Nigeria is one of the first countries to ever issue a CBDC. They have the e-Naira, Naira being, you know, Nigeria's fiat currency. The e-Naira is their uh, CBDC. But the goal for the CNGN, the stablecoin, is not to, sub to substitute, to replace the Naira, the e-Naira, but to complement the use cases that it's going uh, after are not the, you know, simple domestic transfer or payments, but more aligned with um, DeFi and remittances, more importantly, um, foreign exchange. Uh, so uh, the blockchains uh, that they're using are uh, com compatible with EVM chains such as Bantu and the BNB uh, Smart Chain or BSC, uh, and they're going to work to expand compatibility across um, other blockchains, uh, compatible blockchains um, in the future. According to the announcement, uh, the CNGN is going to be pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the Nigerian Naira, meaning it's not a, a, um, a dollar stablecoin as we've seen uh, across DeFi in the most recent years, uh, which means that it needs to be backed by Naira denominated reserves and they're going to be handled by the partner banks um, as, as per the announcement. So they're collaborating across the ecosystem to launch and have that PEG uh, managed by, um, by the participating banks. So everybody's under the same regulatory umbrella. Um, the, use case, the preferred use case is to help Nigerians uh, that live abroad to send money to their families in Nigeria, meaning it's going to be uh, based in remittances, the use cases. Um, and obviously that is to reduce expensive fees that are currently uh, applied to the traditional financials, uh, financial way to send money into the country. That is probably why they chose low cost blockchains to start with such as Buntu and, the, and BSC in the global south, uh, the transaction fees, they are relevant, they matter, and they might be uh, the decision-making point for people trying to use blockchain or traditional finance. Uh, the cost of remittance is always something to be taken into account because if you're sending microtransactions, there's no point in paying the same amount in fees that you're trying to move or trying to remit. So interesting point of the CNGN to actually tackle that problem space for Nigerian uh, Nigerians living uh, living abroad right uh, it's also testimony to the Nigerian Central Bank to be engaged in 
uh, evolving the adoption of um, digital technology for currencies, which is you know tradition since the launch of the e naira. I'm really interested to see how these things are going to play out against other CBDCs, meaning there is an FX um, phenomenon, right? So if you're sending from abroad, you can actually send, say, USDC, which is kind of a stronger currency, and then the Nigerians in country can actually consume and convert as they need between USDC and the and the and the uh, CNGN or even the Naira. So. It's going to be interesting to see adoption in these cases and also because they're using public blockchains how uh, the CNGN uh, stablecoin is going to fare uh, in terms of DeFi because then it becomes easier for Nigerians to actually break into this new form of finance. One of our thesis for widespread adoption is regulatory integration which means that the, the stance of regulators need to evolve dramatically to the point where they're actually participating in the uh, infrastructure. Uh, that also starts with regulators understanding what the infrastructure is, what it can and cannot do, what are the risks and limitations, but also what are the benefits and enablements. And it's interesting to see uh, the um, evolution of that debate, especially when it comes to applying blockchains to tap into what they can offer in terms of efficiencies. And the ISDA is no stranger to exploring uh, the benefits of blockchains. So it's interesting to see in this third drop today to see that uh, ISDA announced that they're updating what they call the Master Derivatives Agreement uh, to support the use of tokenized collateral. The collateral process is usually very cumbersome when dealing that uh, with with the um, parties to post margin and collect the margins and move the margins from you know uh, the the the, co the custodian to the, the the recipient bank, there's a lot of reconciliation. The systems are obviously fragmented and siloed, but using blockchains might be the way to actually streamline the process and create a 24/7 digital collateral marketplace that makes trading the der derivatives. Um, and, and protecting uh, derivatives uh, in, in ways that current infrastructure cannot. Um, the notional value of global derivatives is estimated to be over $700 trillion, but the gross market value circulates around $20 trillion. So that's a lot of trillions, a lot of trillions. So the margin conventionally um, is um, based on bank balances, physical security certificates, which means that someone has a paper, uh, or even assets that are held at a custodian. So now what ISDA did is that in their master agreement for derivatives, the custodians or the banks that are trading these derivatives or issuing these derivatives can actually manage those derivatives on chain, meaning that they can tokenize the collateral and use the tokens to represent in the blockchain the cus the custody but also the automation between when that collateral is posted and when it has to be executed so every party involved in the derivative and the, the collateral management can actually see what's happening in real time and when that margin is triggered uh, it can change hands on chain based on an instruction from a smart contract, which means that this will result in a legally effective transfer of the right to that collateral or the interest of that collateral to the recipient, uh, recipient or the agent involved in that derivative, which pretty much transforms a market that operates on business hours, on business days to a 24 seven operating hours, um, collateral market. So that is interesting to see uh, how these things are going to evolve because obviously you can't put restrictions into something that operates 24-7, but if you can't operate 24-7, then that is restrictive in and on itself. So blockchains operating 24-7 uh, might impose some new forms of assessing risk and assessing pricing and, and how these collateral 
uh, management, the tokenized collateral uh, management process will make it more efficient, but also create this new context in which they operate 24 to seven. Um, we're obviously very excited to see some of these things happen because again, efficiency across markets is something that uh, blockchains, blockchains can bring to the table. Uh, but again, it's important to have such a massive uh, agency that has a global reach to continue to invest in researching and providing guidance to players across the globe into how to bring in uh, blockchains to enable uh, efficiencies at, at the global level. So kudos to ISDA to continue to do that and also to continue to uh, advocate for legal enforceability of everything that is uh, uh, blockchain based, such as you know, the registration of derivatives, but also now the registration uh, of collateral on chain or tokenized collateral. So let's keep tabs on this because this has potential to change uh, markets all over the world. In a week pack full of news, here's more. Snake, the meme coin on Cardano, launches its first play-to-earn game. Solana Foundation announces its super team is now in Brazil. Etherscan, the key block explorer on Ethereum, acquires Solscan, its equivalent on the Solana network. Bungi, one of the largest commodities traders in the world, invested $4 million on Agro Token. Rosenbridge launch, launches its light bridge version between Cardano and Ergo with five initial assets. The Proof of Search 2024 report points to a recovery in the Web3 jobs market. Authors from Ready Player One are preparing the movie Metaverse. HKMA launched a stablecoin public consultation. Berkshire Hathaway Specialty Insurance announces they're adopting Corda for their multinational businesses. And Adara, the Finality Technology Partner, uh, won a contract to develop Spain's CBDC infrastructure. Catch us online. We're on Instagram at Block Drops Podcast. On Twitter at Block Drops Pod or Xerox Mauricio. We're on Lens at blockdrops.lens. We have a newsletter on LinkedIn. Write to us at blockdropspodcast at gmail.com. And you can listen to the Block Drops Podcast at Spotify, iColab, Fabriban Tech, and all of the other major streaming platforms. Shoutouts today for the people who share the links you will find in the episode notes. Otávio Lima, Leonardo Cavalcante, Felipe Ribe, Jeff Prestes, Marcelo Deschamps, Kevin Gibson, and Julio Faura. Don't forget to leave your ratings on your favorite player. This is all for today. Stay rare, stay weird. LFG. LFG.